is not exactly what I want, right? What I do want is actually to reverse this process. Um... Nani? So the first thing that I would actually have to do... Hello everyone to a new video. Uh, I'm sorry I did not post yesterday. Actually, I did film to post, but at the end I did realize while watching what I did film, I was absolutely not coherent. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm a hacker. I, I, I've seen some of these documentaries. I'm building none of that. Hey, the game government and no one in the best sample. No, give my 3D. I have no idea what the <laughs> fuck you're saying right now. <laughs> this is actually what I created uh, while filming that, and I hope you do like it because we will create something pretty similar. It's actually something I still wanted to do, but you know, on my own. And that is a fire extinguisher. Uh, this is an oxygen tank, but uh, basically. Uh, what I did is mounted this oxygen tank on our robot. I will explain uh, in just a bit what's the process that I use because I did a little more uh, stuff. Let me just get this right here. All right. And now that I can hear you. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, I did try to explain you guys how to texture that because that's what we're actually going to do in these next few videos. I think the next maybe three, four videos are going to be only about about uh, texturing and how we can uh, do it different methods and also how to improve them because i think that's the thing everyone can really texture but you know it's a lot about actually improving those set textures uh so um hopefully in this video i'll be much more coherent and actually i will not stretch myself more than i actually can right okay so it did work they don't really work as I hope. Right. Um, and hopefully, if you do appreciate that, you can always give a like to this video to let me know you appreciate it, or leave a comment that you will say, yeah, I do appreciate that, or hey, you can actually try to do that. And also, if you are not subscribed, you can try subscribing, and if you are subscribed, you can always share this video for others to see it and to subscribe. See how the circle of life keeps going around? Yeah, we have to do that. So. Uh, with this being said, let's actually go into the video and uh, talk about what we will do. Um, first things first, uh, let me tell you what I did uh, so far to the robot because I did do some more things that I didn't uh, show. I'm just gonna explain them pretty fast, right? So I did this cut here for like uh, just a little some more details that are actually looking pretty cool and it will make a pretty nice, uh, you know, sort of effect on our robot. And the way you can actually create it, let me take this as, a, um, as an example. Uh, this is just the cube, right? You take the cube, scale it, position it wherever you need it. All you gotta do afterwards is, for this cube, give it a solidify modifier. And maybe a bevel if you want. Uh, that's, uh, of course, only up to you. So, you know, you can just come here, uh, bevel this. And if you do bevel this, this will affect the way it will cut your object you know you can put like two millimeters here so that it's not you know such a big uh difference something like this shade it smooth and then uh if you actually go back to bounds you will see that now you have rounded corners instead of square corners it's a little bit of an effect that does help sometimes i don't think it's that important and it does add geometry so you have to you know always think about these two things I don't think it's that important, which is why I won't bevel this kind of stuff, but, you know, just for you to know. So all you gotta do really is get this uh, cube, give it a solidify modifier, make sure you apply the scale so that the solidify actually goes right, and then you just have to, uh, you know, insert a boolean modifier to this one with this cutter here, and that's about it. It will create you this effect. Now... The thing is, if you do not have the solidify modifier, what will happen is the whole piece will actually be cut. And if you're asking yourself why that happens, well, the explanation is pretty simple, right? A cube is basically four planes that are, you know, stuck together. Well, the solidify basically will, well, solidify those planes. And that is why when you do this, what the boolean will actually cut with is that um, distance between the two planes that you just created now, right? And each that each distance that goes on each side, it's going to be cut out of our body. I hope that does make sense. Uh, it does make sense in my head. 
Uh, another thing I created, uh, you know, are these suspensions here that I are actually recreated with the screw method I showed you in the last clip and also in a short of mine. If you want, you can check it out actually. Uh, and of course, the um, the tank here, the oxygen tank, which I will show you how to model today and also how to texture. We will do the whole process, right? In the last video, uh, well, the last try of the video, really, because it never got out. Um, I'll probably put some clips because I really, really messed up. Like, it was bad. Trust me. Uh, thank God today I'm actually drinking uh, some G Fuel. Uh, this is not a sponsorship or anything. But uh, I have to say that without this, some, uh, some of the days I would be absolutely crushed. Um, it does really make an effect. Uh, now, uh, what I did is actually take this tank here that I modeled and uh, textured it uh we use two actually three programs uh you know with blender included uh to actually texture all this so basically the tank itself was textured in blender this um uh band i don't know how to call it really this sign uh yeah a sign i'm dumb i'm dumb uh, well apparently g fuel has to keep uh, doing its work um this um so this sign right here is actually created using gimp and i'll show you exactly how to do that uh and i uh actually put it in blender so i created this texture in another program which is called quickstone mixer we'll talk about it in just a minute uh but basically all i did is create that uh the texture and then with this uh, design created in GIMP, I just used it as a decal in Blender and that's about it. Uh, while these parts here are actually um, textured in Blender <clears throat> using some Blender kit, um, uh, what are they called, textures. Uh, besides this one, this is actually again a quick zone mixer. And again, uh, this is just a picture really that you just stamp in there and it's, uh, it's good to go. Uh, but I would say it's actually, you know, looking pretty good and looks pretty solid. Now, the one thing I did realize uh, only after I did this is that this could have been and kind of should have been uh, beveled. And if I do it now after, you know, creating the whole thing, it might create some stretching. But actually, you can see it a little bit right here if you, if you notice it. Maybe putting this here. It's it's not that big of a deal. Like it's not you know that obvious, but um you know I don't know is there any kind of bothers me especially because I I should have known about it um and I didn't that uh, kind of bothers me a little bit. But yeah, this is basically what you get, right? Uh, which is a pretty good deal. And uh, what if I unwrap this again? Well, it will unwrap like crap. Uh, which is why I'm not gonna do that. Right, so I'm gonna probably either leave it like this, either not actually bevel these. And uh, you'll have to accept me for what it is, which is a little bit of a mistake here. I just said I'm a mistake, didn't I? Well, too bad. Um, and too true. Uh, also, now we uh, all said everything that we had to say, let's actually get into it, right? Let's actually get to do our fire extinguisher. Alright, so at this point, I actually had the uh, modeling part of the uh, fire extinguisher. However, I did realize while editing that actually uh, that is kind of useless. It's like super basic shapes and uh, really you just extrude them, use the loop tools to kind of get the circles over the surface. And that's about it. Nothing really too crazy or too much to do. If you guys want me to actually show you how I model the extinguisher, please let me know in the comments. However, I do think that you can do that by yourself and it would have added like 40 more minutes of content, which I think would have just been a drag. And again, this is mostly about texturing. So uh, that's what I'm going to go on. And again, if you do want me to show you how to model this, just leave it in the comments and I will make sure to actually put that part of the video up for you guys. Okay, let's go back to the actual video now. <laughs> so, uh, after we are done modeling our fire extinguisher, I uh, parented all the objects to, you know, my main cylinder here, which is actually my fire extinguisher per se. Uh, what we want to do is actually get this ready to go in Quixel Mixer. First things first, we need to UV unwrap this body, right? I already created some of the seams. 
Uh, and, you know, you have the UV and wrap like you would usually get, you know, the extremities basically that you want to, uh, you know, where you want the cuts to happen. I'm not going to explain this in detail. Again, I have a video in my uh, course, my train course, where I explain in detail how this is done. Um, and I think you can understand it much better if you actually go and uh, check that out right there. So here, I'm not actually going to, you know, do that. I'm just going to, you know, um, I'm just going to get this done. I'm going to get my UVs done. Uh, also, you need to uh, kind of, at this point, at least, you should more or less understand where is the position of your um, object, right? Where will your object actually stay? And uh, to me, at least, that is a pretty important aspect. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me unparent this from the extinguisher and parent it to this. Um, and you'll see why in just one little second. That will still be parented to my extinguisher. Uh, also, I'll do the same to this one. Okay, so uh, now I have everything parented. So everything up here is parented actually to my valve here. And the valve itself is parented to the extinguisher. The reason for it is because I want these to actually look almost perfectly on the x-axis. So to do that, I had to move this a little bit. Okay, this actually seems to be uh, pretty good actually. More or less. Let me go R R Z and try to move this. So the, this is actually saying on this line right here. So this is why the grid also from Blender is so so good, so useful because you can actually check out what you're doing. Okay, this actually should be pretty fine. Uh, okay, and with this being done, um, now you have to decide where this object will actually stay on your scene because. You will want to create this seam that will be basically on the length of your whole body. Um, you will want to put it on the side that it's actually not going to be seen by your, uh, you know, viewers. And basically, for us, it's going to be this part right here, right? So this or this should do pretty good. So mark this seam A and unwrap. To see the unwrap, uh, again, the detailing uh, of how to UV unwrap. You can find it in my uh, course. However, these are a little, uh, a few details. So you only have to go uh, on the UV editor. And what you gotta do is actually uh, come here to overlays and display stretch and see if there are any stretches uh, on our uh, model. As you can see, the actual UV unwrapping is pretty good. How do you know that? If this blue, like dark blue is here, that's fine. Right, if this light blue shows up, it's still okay, but it means it started to stretch. However, if, for example, let's say, uh, let me deactivate this. Uh, if I would take this uh, vertex right here and start to move it, and you'd see this kind of color, yeah, not good. That is gonna look horrible. So, you know, always try to avoid that, make more cuts, or, uh, you know, try to check again uh, and try to unwrap it better. Uh, also, another thing you can actually check uh, on how to do. And I think I already created one on, for this one. No, I didn't. Good. Okay, so let's... Um, the materials you saw are for the oxygen tank, the, you know, failed course. The failed, uh, sorry, uh, tutorial, uh, basically. Uh, all right, so what you want to do is actually come here, create an image texture. Press on new, call this UV test, make it, uh, in my opinion, you should make this 4 or 2K, it depends on you. I'm going to make this 4K, deactivate the alpha, and here at generated type, you uh, will change it from blank to UV grid, and this is actually what you'll see. Connect this to the output, and now if we su switch to material, this is what you will see. Um, again. 
I go in way more detail in my uh, train course, but basically this is kind of a good way of you to see how to how your mesh is doing. Because basically, if you see these squares starting to stretch, uh, it means there's an actual problem there, right? And uh, we would not like that. Um, and for example, here you can actually kind of see it, right? You can probably see notice a little bit of stretching if we actually go all the way down here right which means i should cut this a little more however because it's such a, a small area i honestly don't think that would be necessary um because that would mean to cut it somewhere like uh well that annoys me a lot let me just um Go to view, clip start. If it clips a lot for you, just go here to view, clip start. And that means you can actually get way closer to your object before it starts clipping. It's a pretty good uh, good way to, you know, help yourself out if it uh, that annoys you as well as it, you know, annoys me. Uh, so I can actually cut it there, but that would be... Um, uh, that would be a way to get rid of uh, that stretching but i will also have to check for it you know not to actually ruin my object so let me look at it again from the whole part and uh, no it seems to do pretty well and i'm pretty sure the stretching is not gonna happen at least not as much that's for sure so you know that light blue we saw yeah it's pretty much gone. That's how you kind of can avoid stretching. You have to either find new cuts, either uh, try to, you know, cut it a little smarter. Okay, around here, there's nothing you can do. It's where you, you know, made your cut. This will happen, whatever you try. However, uh, with this being done, we are ready to actually get this to Quixel Mixer. Now, Quixel Mixer, uh, first of all, to get it, you only have to go to Google. Uh, Google Quixel Mixer, press on the first tab you see, and this page will actually show up. Download this, install it, um, and if you've heard of a program such as Substance Painter, which is the industry standard, and I think if there's a chance for you to hear of any texturing uh, program, that is one of it, um, this is basically a similar thing. Now, yes, Blender can also do texturing in uh, itself, however, if you ask me, Quixel Mixer brings something to the table that Blender cannot really bring because Blender is uh, basically node based. So you kind of have to do all the nodes and, you know, uh, play around with them. However, here we're talking about layering. What layering means is just you get the texture, drag it, apply some masks and play around with it a little bit. You'll see in just a second what I'm talking about. And that's kind of it it's not as confusing it's a little easier and uh it also has uh, another bonus because if this name actually seems familiar to you it's because if you remember uh, in if you did watch my course uh for that train which by the way i think is really good you should go check it out i do talk when we started texturing where you can get free textures and quixel mega scan is one of the best places to get them how because uh, they have professional textures and they're free. Uh, Quixel Mixer is uh, now a company that was bought by Epic and they do give a lot of stuff for free. Uh, you have to check, however, if uh, the licensing does allow you to sell your objects. I know for sure you can sell them on Unreal Store. On the Unreal Store, I have to admit I did not check if you can you know, sell their textures on any other part. I'm not sure about that, but uh, you actually should because they are free textures. And that's another good thing about Quixel Mixer. It allows you to actually get access to a lot of textures, assets, surface imperfections, and so many other stuff. And also the baking process uh, of the textures is uh, way easier than Blender is. Trust me, you will love this in comparison to Blender. Um, so uh, let me show you. How this will look like you right. have to log in and by the way if you do have an epic games account which i guess everyone will have 
you don't have to create an account for them, right? This is more than enough to actually get started. And this is the first page you will see. Now, the first thing you have to do is create a new mix right here. And let me call this fire extinguisher. And the resolution of the textures are going to be 2K. And that's pretty fine because this is not a main character, right? And it's uh, working pretty well for me to be 2K. And this is what you get, right? You will see a plane um, and, you know, a lot of tabs that you could be pretty scared of um by the way also if uh, this is the first time you see quixel mixer this will be a good intro for you because i'll talk to you through how to move around how to use some of the things however if you want like beginner tutorials for that the quixel team on youtube you can search for them actually do give you that information for free and it's actually pretty good that's how i kind of got started with quixel mixer and it's really really good trust me um, let's actually move our uh, object from Lenda to a quick zooming, sir, which actually also will allow you to learn how to get any object from Blender to, well, whatever program you actually need. Because to do that, you need to do an exporting. Now, again, before you do exporting, uh, you have to make sure that the scale is applied. Uh, in my opinion, the rotation and location, you should apply them as well just to make sure that everything is fine <clears throat> and then make sure it is the uv unwrapped as well so that is ready for texturing now with all these being done and out of the way go to file to the export tab right here and actually you have a lot of ways you can export it the two most um used ones are obj or fbx both of them are read by basically any 3d software at least as far as i know and they're gonna be pretty good to to know use in uh, in other programs usually i do use fbx most of the time but you know it's up to you uh to choose all right uh if you actually chose the folder let me actually also name it okay if you chose the folder and you named your file what you gotta do is uh press on selected object so you basically limit your export to just get that and uh at object types you should just have pressed mesh because this is all we're trying to export right uh with this being said just export your fbx and now the magic starts because we can go to quixel mixer where again you have a plane and the first thing to do, actually get our model in here is here where you see the type of model uh, the plane you have to choose custom model and uh, choose uh, the folder that you actually save this in and bring your uh, object in and here it is here is our beautiful uh, extinguisher now to be able to move around quixel mixer it's a little different than it was in blender so middle mouse is actually the one you use to move your object just like this to just like drag it around your scene uh, by pressing alt and then left click you can actually rotate around your object uh shift and alt uh no sorry shift and right click will allow you to move the light uh around your scene to basically better see the lighting and also you can change the lighting from you know street lights to indoors to uh desert road to pizza to whatever happens fluorescent i don't know why you do that but whatever you you get the point you have a lot of choices basically is what i'm trying to say um street lights is what i chose because you know it kind of reflects a little better what we're trying to achieve uh also if you press uh you know if you scroll the middle mouse you're going to scale your object um and um now for the keyboard actually i'll have to show you something first before we move to the keyboard uh, and i just realized that um and to actually show you something, uh, these tabs here are actually going to be pretty scary at first, but the ones that you really work with is this setup, because you have to set up your scene before we get, get into the work, and then layers and exports are the ones that you really, really need to know, right? Layers is where the magic really happens, is where we create the textures, and you have quite a bit of options. Surface layer, decals, smart materials uh solid layers and so on and so forth basically 
um what these do is a solid layer just allows you to create a color right and here in the right you can actually see something that it's pretty familiar if you know a little bit of uh, about textures anyway um so basically what we have in a principled bsdf you'll find right here right you have an albedo the metalness roughness uh displacement and normal informations Ambient occlusion is also included here, the opacity and also emission if you want it. Right now it's deactivated, but you can always activate it and you know then play around with it. And you can also play with a, a mode, it's blending with your colors and stuff. Uh, but right now this is just a simple color, so of course it cannot really emit anything. Uh, then of course an albedo, you can you know change the color to whatever you want. Uh, you can even put a, an image on this if you really want it just depends you can go as crazy as you want with it uh but again this is just a color right you can also paint so you can have a paint layer where you'll have you'll see this um and the um, the one annoying thing that i kind of find about this is that this usually comes um white basically so it's kind of annoying and as you can see, I'm deforming the body because right now I'm uh, actually affecting the displacement. Um, so, you know, if you deactivate the displacement, this is what you will see, right? Uh, you can choose, of course, to, you know, not affect the displacement at all. So, in theory, uh, if we clear the displacement here, uh, then you can just decrease this. You know, put it again and we will displace just a little less. Anyway, you get the point. You can do a lot of things and it's a pretty cool uh, cool part to have. Uh, you can choose also different brushes. You can download brushes from their online store, which I'm uh, going to talk about in just one uh, second. Because uh, that's also a pretty cool part there. Uh, but really, we don't need any of this, right? Um, because... Uh, what we have that we really really will work with are gonna be the surface layers <clears throat> if you want the smart layer the smart materials which you know it's basically exactly what it says it brings you a smart material just like we have in blender you know that we can create with a principled bsdf this is a procedural material more or less anyway um and if you actually open this folder it shows you kind of what you can create so you will have a base material maybe with some colors here and there that you can paint over and afterwards really that's kind of like another material with a mask so that you know it knows where to be put and so on and so forth like um these are created by people by the way so it's kind of what you will also learn how to do in some time so you have also, by the way, a lot of materials, just for you to know. Uh, so let's actually search for like a red metal. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to uh, make you understand why I think this is such a great thing to have. Even if you don't want to work in a Quixel Mixer for, you know, like actual... Um, <clears throat> let me see. This actually might do good. Yes. Yeah, oh, this will look perfect. Damn, this is good. I might actually stick with this and not do anything else anymore. I'm kidding. But yeah, uh, <clears throat> this is one of the things you can do, right? You can actually just come in here and really put a base material, some colors, as you can actually see, uh, and call it basically uh, a day if you put this in, because really this will give you a smart material that looks absolutely awesome. Uh, you can get this, export it, which we will talk about a little later. So if you just want to do this, it's pretty fine by me. You can just skip uh, to the part of the video where I show you how to export these materials. And, you know, call it a day because this is more than enough. And it gives you an amazing material for almost no work at all. Which sounds like cheating, but it's not, right? It's, yeah, it's good. It's fine. Don't worry. And again, you have like lots and lots of options. So again, this is one of the things that I really, really, really love about Quixel Mixer is the fact that uh, so many people work on on this and we, they give you stuff like this, which looks absolutely fantastic. 
And if you think it's too much, of course, you can come in here and actually also play around with, uh, with, the, uh, with the stuff. So that you actually will have, you know, a little, you know, more that you can actually uh, tweak. So you can come in here where the gradient actually is and, you know, tell it, hey, I don't want all this. But let's say you actually want to see each map, not just the whole thing. Here's how you do that. And here comes the, you know, keyboard stuff. So by pressing the numbers on the keyboard, by the way, not on the numpad, on the keyboard, right? Uh, by pressing one, you see this, which is the full material. And yes, it's exactly what you saw so far. So you shouldn't have changed the view if that's what you thought. If you press two, you will actually see only the albedo. So albedo is what we have in Blender called color. And this is the color information you get here. Uh, three is going to give you the metalness. And if you do see a pattern, it's because it's exactly the pattern here. So one gives you the full thing. Two, the albedo. Three, the metalness that you see here. Four is the roughness. Five, the... Well, here they actually kind of changed it, right? So they give you the normals first. And then uh, six, they give you the displacement. And then um, for seven, the ambient occlusion. Uh, for eight, I think this is the opacity. Or at least I might be I might be wrong, but I'm not. I don't think I am wrong though. Anyway, and then nine gives you the masks. However, there's a small difference between nine and zero because if you press zero, nothing changes. However, if you move on to uh, this node, for example, grunge for leaks, things will change. However, if you press on nine, it will stay the same. The reason is nine basically shows you the mask. You know the complete mask the whole combination of these layers right here however zero shows you each mask in particular which you know it's pretty fine it's pretty cool <clears throat> okay uh having this let's actually get this out and uh actually start doing something right uh so what we can do let's go back to one and see what we have so this is our object it is uh, uv unwrapped it's pretty nice and it's pretty cool and you can come right here to surface layer what surface layer is instead of you know our um smart materials you will actually just choose one material that you'll put over your body and then you can play around with it just as those people did with the other stuff right <clears throat> now what you can do is you know uh search through whole all this thing here uh which is a lot there are a lot of materials it's a lot of information uh but i mean you kind of know already you just have to search for some material you want in here and you probably will find it if you won't find what you want you can go to the online uh part and here is actually where people upload the stuff right and as i said you can also get 3D stuff. So this is going to be a 3D asset of a uh, turkey. Because why not? Maybe, you know, uh, you want to, to, have a, to have a table that's actually set and you can eat and stuff. You will have this turkey on the table. Why not? Um, <clears throat> and basically, you can just, you know, download all these things. You can also download the materials and different stuff that you might want. So, for example, let's go to fabrics. You can download different fabrics and, uh, you know, use them in whatever kind of purpose you might find fit. Uh, for us, for example, I will want a red metal, just like I wanted earlier. Uh, and let us see if we actually can find one. And for example, I don't i don't have something at least not something i want right uh i can actually choose iron to just you know be uh pretty specific uh, and afterwards i can actually go to the albedo and actually change the color to the albedo itself so that it's uh you know fitting what i want so you know again just like in blender the difference is I don't have to go through the annoyance of, you know, adding a color ramp node and an RGB node and to mix those together. You just do this by layers. And that's, in my opinion, the big advantage and uh, why you might want to use this and why I do really think that this actually, you know, um, 
brings a whole lot to the table when it comes to actually, you know, choosing between Blender and, and Quicksilver Mixer. When it comes to texturing, now of course, Blender has a lot of uh, attributes itself, because you can do, you can work with easier there, of course, because it already knows the object, and uh, also if you got used to the node system, it kind of makes sense to use it, because it's very powerful and it can create a lot of stuff with it. However, uh, there's also, of course, the add-ons, which... In my opinion, it's kind of hard a bit, especially when Blender Kit and Polygon offers you so many textures already. Uh, but these, again, offers you so many stuff as well. And, um, I mean, you should kind of take advantage of that. I would say that my best materials ever created are used with this. So if you actually want to, you know, have an actual red metal and, you know, the, the option of actually coloring that iron is not sounding good for you, you can, of course, go to the online store and actually, you know, try to find one, um, actually for the first time, it's a, I don't know, scratch painted metal sheet, oh, this would work perfect, you know what, I'm gonna download this as well, just to make a comparison, but yeah, it looks really good, so again, yeah, you have so many options with, uh, with Quixel, which is why I really believe it's a really good way to, you know, at least try it out, uh, so for example, if I would put this, I could turn off the iron and just see the, you know, this metal here that is created and it looks absolutely awesome. Okay, and again, you can just have that and almost call it a day. You don't necessarily have to do anything else, do you? Um, right. Now, of course, I can choose which one I like best and just because... I want to do almost everything myself. I'm going to choose this iron right here, right? I'm sorry, I think it looks a little better, not going to lie to you. Um, but let me actually make it a little... Um... Okay, so the color, I think this is much better. A little darker, um, kind of like this. Uh, now, what you want to do is actually put another material or... What I like to do most of the time is put some imperfections in here. So let me actually delete this, uh, create some uh, imperfections. And now you can put, you know, whatever you find here that you like. Um, so let me actually put this, yeah, this old little uh, scratch metal. And this is how it's going to look at first, right? Which is uh, almost looking like it messed up everything right uh, again this is just about how the blending happens between the two materials right because basically uh what happens is this material and this material are trying to work together but what uh quixel is telling um the materials to do is just go over each other and it's fine however you can come to the albedo here and actually and instead of normal, press multiply, and it already changed a lot. Because with this being done, what it's doing is basically just how we would mix uh, two, you know, colors together. This is basically the same thing. Uh, mixing two, you know, materials together. And again, it's way easier when you do this. And you also can just, you know, play with the opacity of our uh, scratched painted metal. Also, you can, of course, play around with the colors of it. Because, you know, that also helps. Okay. <clears throat> uh, of course, you can do the same process to almost every single other aspect. So the roughness is also normal. You can put it to multiply and something like this will happen. Which, almost, really, I don't like. And I never really liked when it happened. Um, of course, you can play like with a, a contrast of our surface imperfections and see if it helps us. Um, let's see how it would look without, and this is with. So no, uh, having this to multiply, it's actually not helping us. Having it to add, it's gonna make it uh, too rough. So even if I'm decreasing the opacity, it's still not gonna be good enough. So absolutely not. Um, let me see where it is. Okay, um, 
Maybe overlay is actually going to be the best choice here. And I think it is, yeah. So let me bump the, pro the contrast. So you can actually see the difference here. So the contrast, you'll actually get a little more imperfections over our, um, over our object there. Right. Of course, you can also add a paint mask and actually paint the imperfections yourself. Uh, but I want to do this, you know, a little more, um, you know, natural. And I think this actually looks pretty good. I'm actually pretty, pretty happy with the results so far. Uh, of course, you can also come in here. And this is the blend. This is the opacity of the blend. It's just like our factorial node in Blender. You can set this to whatever you want. To, you know, so if you put it to zero, it means only the iron is functioning. Um... So, uh, sorry, this was for the iron, I'm sorry. Uh, if you put this to 1, it means both of them are now taken fully into consideration, right? And now here the blend is it's blending this just half, kind of. So let's put this to full, of, co of course, because, uh, again, I really like how it looks. And actually, I'm going to put one more um, surface imperfection in there, right? Which is going to be the leakage. And uh, here's what we get. So again, we can actually take this out and the iron, and this is what we would get. But with the iron here, if you again set the albedo to multiply, this is what you actually get, which is actually pretty cool and pretty interesting if you ask me. Um, and also you can get the scratch paint. And again, this will not be the greatest thing ever, because it darkens our, um, you know, our color quite a bit. Now, of course, you can go to roughness and also set this to multiply or something, or to overlay rather, because that was the better version. But again, because of it, so this time I will put this to just 1.1, because I don't want the leakage to be that obvious. Uh, and the opacity of the albedo, I'm going to play around with it to just make it not as noticeable. Something like this, I think, works. And now you can see that the leakage is actually on the side, which I actually don't think I want. So what you can do is actually create, with right-clicking over this, you can put some masks over it. Of course, you can paint a mask over it, but we don't want to do that. We want to actually work procedurally on it. So add a mask stack. And what you can do is uh, up here at mask component, this basically is like texture mapping that we do in Blender, right? So you can actually get some noise, some patterns, uh, you know, normals, curvature. So curvature, for example, is, you know, one of the easier ones to explain. Let's go to nine. And uh, the way this works, right, is uh, just like the ambient occlusion or the geometry node, if you remember. Uh, again, if you don't, go to my train course where I actually use those because it's a really useful trick in Blender and in anything as well. And it basically reads where your um, where curves happen for your object, right? And you can play around with this, kind of about this. And the leakage would only be here because that's what we tell it to do. Put our leakage only on these areas. But I don't want to do that, right? This is not what I'm looking for. What I am looking for uh, is actually to have an, uh, where was it? A projection. Now, projection is a totally different beast, right? Because what happens with it, you can actually play around with this. You can actually set it to freeform, and then you can keep rotating and playing around uh, with your uh you know material and stuff but the problem is nothing really happens and the reason is there's nothing here it's projecting stuff sure but it's not really projecting anything because there's nothing to project so you have to come back here uh where it says add mass component and add something that you can actually uh project right so for example uh i could use uh, let me see, I could use a texture map, right? And here is where things get a little bit interesting because I can either uh, paint over this or 
I could uh, come in here and instead of that, uh, I could use maybe... I think a gradient texture would actually be the best. But instead of uh, a gradient from this pattern here, usually I use the um, position gradient because it gives you a little more um, room to play around with. So basically, where is white, the leakage happens. Wherever it's black, you know, the leakage is stopped basically so let's actually kind of stop it <clears throat> i'll kind of stop it around here somewhere and uh this actually should be doing pretty good and now we can actually come in here and get a projection and now uh if i'm actually setting this uh right let's go back and make this freeform go back to one and now you can actually see my texture is changing around. So this is rotating. And it's actually rotating pretty badly. Because uh, this of course is using our um, UVs. So it is good that it's doing that. It's absolutely wonderful. But there's a problem. Uh, which is... Well... If I'm moving this, it's going to look extremely weird. And that is one of, if not the most, um, maybe problematic stuff that I would say it has, uh, you know, Quixel Mixer has. Because it's not working, again, like Blender. It's not like it knows your body. Even though in Blender also, if you use your UVs, you kind of get the exact same problem, right? After you do the UVs, you need to work with what you have. Right, uh, but at least there you can actually rotate your textures. In this one, you can rotate it, but you actually rotate the entire stuff. Right, you don't rotate just this uh, leakage material. You rotate the map itself, which is annoying. And this is why usually you would like instead of your UVs to actually paint this, but um, yeah, it's not gonna happen this time. So I can actually just delete this mask. And I think I have to go and uh, stick with this leakage. However, I can do something about it. Uh, so I shouldn't have deleted that. I should have let it there with the gradient still there. Because at least with the gradient, I'm actually getting a little bit more control over where the leakage happens. And I can make it way more contrasty. Or actually let it to be a little more subtle and I can actually leave it you know to go pretty far but at least this way you know the bottom is actually not going to be that leakaged and this part is actually going to be a little more um you know used up let's call it okay and I would say this actually looks pretty fine pretty nice uh however we can actually come in here and come to let's see Soil, I think it's a better one. Uh, to actually get some uh, soil mud. And the reason we want to do this. Let's actually get the soil mud. I don't know what was the difference between those two, but here's the deal. We will actually make this, have some dirt around itself. And how do we do that? Well, with another mask, of course. How you put this mask in, it's pretty simple, actually. And by the way, you can actually have this. And if you press Alt and then left click and you have this little uh, arrow there, you can actually create this kind of effect, right? Which uh, means that it will uh, affect, like it works only for the under stuff that it has, right? If I put this for the leaky, uh, let me disable this. If I do the same thing over this one, not a lot will change because, you know, you won't be able to see that many changes. Uh, but basically it will do... So actually, let me take these two down. And this is how this would look, right? So this is the same thing, but this will actually works for the iron, basically. And also, of course, you can actually move the layering around, right? So as you can see... Uh, let me also take this mask off because it might, uh, you know, be bad. So... Without doing this, as you can see, 
there's some small displacement happening here and th that displacement is actually from from this year from the mod um and that is because it was affecting it from the iron i don't know how to explain this uh that well so basically this would work by itself right now right when you put it on the iron it's working with the information that the iron gives it however it does keep its own texture if it makes any sense however if you move it upwards here with all the effects we have the moment i put this in it's uh almost like um these actually take over because this is only going to be used for the leakage stuff i hope that actually made sense it kind of made sense in my head uh, anyway, to get the soil to actually get where we want, because that's what we, we, we need, uh, we go here to the component again, and here where you see curvature selected, it's exactly the thing we were talking about a little uh, earlier, and actually let me get a displacement down. We don't need displacement, we'll use just the normals. Remember uh, when we talked about textures, uh, the most important three things we need is uh, the color, the roughness, and the normals. Everything else is a nice addition, but not that important per se. Uh, okay, and now with this mask here, let's press 9 to actually see what we're doing. And uh, now I can actually just play around and, you know, see where dirt will have to be. And actually, let's say I like this and I can go here and this is what we get, right? We get dirt exactly where we told it to have. But let's say I don't want it up here. Which is kind of true. Oh, I don't want it. I want it just down here. What I can do is, of course, add again the position gradient. The position gradient will actually tell this okay, you're fine and all, but you can only be used where I'm telling you to. So let me actually get. Okay, so after you added the curvature and the position gradient, what you want to do is actually come here, uh, uh, get the gradient remap. And what Gradient Remap does is basically taking your gradient texture and basically remapping the texture to it. So it then uh, basically it allows you to control, as you can see, uh, where this gradient is, you know, actually happening. Uh, and as you can see, we still have some dirt up there, but that's actually fine because we can actually put one more thing here. Uh, I think Clamp also helps us with uh, how much uh you know dirt there is like capacity wise uh so let's get it maybe to a point four and also let's get a blur gaussian which basically will well blur our thing actually let me see if blur or bevel which one would do i oh, bevel works way better okay get it just a little bit more up so this looks a little better, but we do want to get one more thing. Uh, by the way, you, uh, so what's up here, it's how these text these masks basically are again blending between each other. So you can set this to, multi usually I leave it kind of to multiply. So afterwards, you know, you can just uh, play around with it. So, um, this is actually... Let me see what we do with the clamp. Okay, it's fine. You know, take the range and get it a little bit upper. But again, the dirt then will also show up here. <clears throat> so something like this. So 0 0.7 would do. Uh, and we'd have this, right? Which, um... Oh, okay, no, just set the bevel to normal and the gradient map uh and maybe the curvature as well to multiply okay if we do that that's actually a little better uh, sorry i think i just yelled in the mic i'm really sorry and actually you can get this leveled a little stronger or a little weaker in uh, whatever case you want uh so i'm actually gonna get this to well not overlay definitely um not add now normal actually was looking a little better because it does gives you a little bit of uh, deformation there and a little bit of dirt but just so much that is not that noticeable and you can also from uh, here from mask you can actually get one more thing which is 
noise. Now, of course, uh, this is not going to create, you know, such a good thing. Uh, we'll put it actually over everything else. Uh, and what we'll do, um, it's again, just like Blender, basically. The noise really works with, well, the frequency, it's how much it is. Octaves is like the detailing, if you remember. Usually I use it to like full lacunarity uh, is, well, exactly what kind of that's in Blender. And again, persistence is how contrasty to everything else it is. So basically, uh, how much, how it blends with everything else. And if you have this, set this one to actually multiply. And it will create this variation to everything else that we do actually have, right? So we do get some, you know, pretty good detail, pretty good dirt here. But again, barely noticeable because that is exactly how we need it to be. And actually, again, you can go to persistence and make it very persistent. But I like it to let it a little bit washed out. Like it's, yeah, it's there, but it's, you know, it's just a little dusty, it's just a little uh, stuff. So now we have, uh, in my opinion, a pretty, pretty decent material, but we can do better than this. We can actually create even more stuff. Uh, what we can create is actually something called Rust, which, uh, well, granted, we kind of use Rust in everything we did, I think. And uh, we did also for the oxygen tank. Uh, again, we will have more than one texture, and uh, that is why I actually kind of need to have this. Uh, because it's gonna be like a more damaged version and a more full uh, optimized uh, well, not optimized but like a newer version that doesn't have all these rusty dusty stuff around it because it doesn't need to uh, so for the rust we will basically have to use again position gradient because it's the one that basically helped me you know declare where I want the rust to be and uh, where I want it to be is actually the bottom really i that's that's it <laughs> right so i can actually do that or if i would uh, like i could also get the rust up uh down here and actually uh connect it basically to my other to my previous stuff right or even maybe let me see if i get it down here and actually using now yeah yes as i thought it's going to help me out so up here is not gonna do that great right because it doesn't do too much actually i think it does change a little bit yeah it does put a little bit of uh, definition of course again take the displacement out we don't want that uh it does give us a little bit of uh you know something to work with and actually if you increase the range it does basically it's kind of making the paint look a little more dented which i like i like this a lot uh so with this being done i'm going to actually just add it one more time it doesn't really matter where you add it at this point um i didn't expect for that result i'm not gonna lie to you this is why again uh play around with your things because you never know exactly what you will get uh, now, again, the position gradient will be here. Again, the curvature will be here because we will do basically the exact same thing we did earlier. Uh, the only difference, however, first, uh, the tightness has to be a little... Uh, no, the levels first. Levels. I need this to be more or less like this. Now about tightness. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it to zero. Because again, I'm going to uh, make these two work together. So I'm gonna blend it with... Um, no, multiply, sorry. Uh, oh wait, I'm on, uh, I'm on zero, and I? So if I actually do it, put it with multiply, it's going to show me exactly what I need. And let's just increase the range, so I only see this side. Okay, kind of like this should do a little better. And uh, this is kind of what I see, a little bit of rust around here. And um, a lot of rust up here, which 
it's not exactly what we're looking for, of course. Um, now, of course, we can actually get to the, to the position gradient and realize, you know, what else would work? Another position gradient, of course. Uh, not, wait, sorry. I uh, got it, uh, its values, didn't I? Okay, so we came back and actually, apparently, quick slow mix were bugged for a second there. Uh, it didn't show me anything and it just stuck to rendering for some reason. I don't know if it's something I did, but um, yeah, pretty weird. Anyway, going back to what we did, what we were doing. Anyway, uh, so we want the uh, upper part to actually have, uh, you know, the gradient and the curvature. So basically, we need to create that. Um, let's actually level this kind of like this. Yeah, I still need to kind of see these imperfections in there, so I kind of want to maybe around here widen this a little bit. They should do. Yeah, they should do pretty good. Uh, and this, if we set it to multiply, of course, we can actually, uh, you know, we will multiply it with what we have under it, which is going to be perfect for what you want. Um... Was I? Oh, okay. I was uh, again on. Uh, I, I didn't understand why I didn't see it, but apparently I was back to you know zero and stuff, and that's why. Something like this should work pretty okay. But again, uh, as I mentioned last time, the rust up here it's too much. It's way too obvious, and I don't want that, right? So what I will do is actually I will get another position uh, gradient, put it actually under this one. Let me get this down and uh, let's see what we get because uh, we actually want to change this a little bit. So what we want to do is actually invert this, all right? And we want to get this basically kind of all the way up, but at the same time to uh, make sure that the upper portion here, which we have, is a little more toned down, if it makes any sense. I hope it does. So, you know, something maybe like this. Okay, so basically now, when we get here... Uh, by the way, this one should also be set maybe to multiply, so that it takes in consideration what's also under itself. Right, so... Let's set to... 9 and uh, see what we get and actually you can actually see right here that it does already you know uh, work so if I get this to like a 0 0.09 uh, no wait <laughs> 0 0.9 it's actually way darker because uh, the more I move it the less I can actually see of it so if I leave it to like around here a 0 0.96 uh, when I will actually see the rust is way, way less preeminent than it, than it used to be. And actually, if I get it just a little more up, so 0.97 maybe, you can see it more clearly, 0.99, a little more, and so on and so forth. So I'm actually going to leave it at like 0.98. It's kind of that in-between I kind of want. And now we also have a little bit of rust around here, which again is something we like. Let me get this. So this one has to, you know, work for both of these, which is working pretty nice. Uh, and now, of course, we want to get two more things, which first one is the blur with uh, actually not a blur, but a bevel to have, you know, the same effect we had last time. And the width this time has to be way less because so a zero point. 0 0.05 maybe or 0 0.08 we need to move you know quite um, 0 0.15 0 0.2 uh, like very smoothly you know you don't want to go like 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 is going to get like crazy 
here we will lose everything here really so 0 0.001 you know it's even more noticeable um and actually if you have this you could probably also increase um you know the prominence a little more so 0.99 can actually come back and you will see it a little better but also have it beveled so it's um uh, a little less a little less seen um either that either you actually you know you can get a bevel out uh and instead of using the bevel for this i think the noise might do the work by itself so the noise really has to usually work for exactly these kind of reasons at least this is the way i'm using it right which is uh to work for this exact you know uh, moment where i needed to create that randomness uh that people look for because randomness and stuff like this is pretty hard to find and uh you know it's pretty cute when you see it uh happening so i actually do have it and it's actually pretty nice uh looking which is nice uh and i'm actually going to do a little more and get this rust one more time and yes i promise this is the last time but you'll see why i want to actually be able to paint a little bit over it how to do that though because again if you actually so you can come in here and add a paint mask but again everything is white so it basically starts with um everything rusty and then you will take everything out to not be rusty anymore but that is not what we want uh, also let's turn off the displacement for this and um for this until if it had it don't have the displacement because it's going to destroy our mesh uh because it's not that detailed and that's why uh good so with this what we want to do is actually let me clear the mask what i want to do is actually add also a mask stack this mask stack will actually just have a texture map now why is this cool it's uh, a very simple reasoning if you go to the paintbrush now everything is black and actually if you paint over uh well i chose a really bad example but if you paint over and also make sure that the color is at white yes it was not yeah of course you can also set it to gray to be like a little bit in between but what i'm trying to say is <clears throat> now this is actually working and you can actually use this to you know get your coloring in and also if you're wondering you can actually get brushes in from around here so you can also add brushes that you want also uh i was pretty sure that yeah you can actually have brushes uh downloaded from uh blender uh, from blender from um uh quixel mixer itself so again, another reason this program is such a cool program because it gives you, it offers you basically anything you would need to be able to texture professionally, by the way. Uh, and yes, uh, a lot of people do use it professionally to texture. Um, let me see. Rust brush, does that exist? It does. How about that? Uh, let me get, actually, let me get both of them. You know what? I'm not like paying for them. So uh, I might just as well use this um okay so go back to viewport <clears throat> after you downloaded this something's going on on my throat what the hell okay uh and now you can just color this right and you can just add these small details in around and well uh just have uh, fun doing so change you know everything you need and go pretty crazy with it <clears throat> also you can erase uh to you know not have to just change colors all the time all the time because that would be annoying uh i do suggest you to you know change also the value so it looks more washed out the more it goes um and of course you know you will not want it to be Totally there so let me just delete it a little more and actually use it 
kind of like this. Okay, I'm just gonna do this uh, fairly fast and actually come back with the next part. Okay, so after a few um, <clears throat> minutes uh, and a lot of edge here and listening to, um, I got to this result, which in my opinion is uh, really, really nice looking. And uh, let me actually just change from this because I am afraid I will uh, destroy it somehow. And uh, yeah, again, this actually looks pretty fantastic. Again, this actually is used to create this deformation uh, on the inside there. And of course, I can use more of that to actually drive uh, more deformations like this. I don't need to and I don't want to do that because that would be a little bit of an overkill. And um, the thing with this kind of stuff, in my opinion, is don't exaggerate. Like rust, uh, you know, dirt. Uh, and uh, this is an advice from me uh because i used to do a mistake when i started to do this and I, when i learned about this especially when i learned about the ambient occlusion and the geometry node in blender i did everything like very contrasty and super in your eyes super in your face for you to be able to see that yes i worked on this i it has these details but I didn't realize that doing so, it actually affected the end result because it actually looked very 3D and it looked uh, very bad, really. It didn't even matter if it's 3D. Like, you can be okay with seeing something 3D as long as it at least looks good. At least look good. Looks good? Look good? I don't... Yeah, you know what? No. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm trying to figure out if everything here is fine. I just suggest you to rotate the light around to actually, you know, see, uh, you know, the light actually <clears throat> for more places. And if you don't like it, it's fine. You can come back later on and actually change the textures and export them one more time. Because here's what we do now is exporting the texture. And uh, the way you do this, you, well, get to the export. Uh, choose the folder. Uh, and after you actually chose the folder, uh, you can unsub the create subfolder if you already have a folder now if you don't uh it doesn't really matter but you know um it's just it's creating another folder usually and it's kind of annoying uh what you want to get out of this one again we don't have displacement because we deactivated them all uh ambient occlusion you can have it i don't usually get it metalness again uh you can check out at your bodies but usually our metalness is, well, nothing. We have no information from it. But that's, uh, and also you can check it by going to 3. There's nothing. There's literally nothing there. It's a lot of nothing burger. And um, by the way, this uh, talk is from Charlie. And if you don't know who Charlie is, search for Penguin Z Z0 on, uh, on YouTube. He's a pretty funny guy. But yeah. Uh, a bit of a nothing burger that doesn't help us at all. So uh, what we really do want is the albedo, the roughness, and the normal. Everything else is kind of optional, and I honestly don't think you ne necessarily need it. Um, and with this, you can set the resolution of what the textures will be like. Usually 2K is what you want for something that is not really in your face, or even less than that, like 1K. Uh, I will leave it to 2K. Uh, and maybe the robot is the only one that will get to be 4K because, you know, it's in your face. Uh, and just export this and you will see that the maps are exported. And then what we want to do is actually get this information to Blender. The way you do that, it's actually pretty easy. Go to the Shading tab. And uh, as you can see, I was working on this. Again, for the failed tutorial, I still hope I put, uh, you know, videos from it because I was pretty funny. Like... I messed up so bad so many times there. It was, uh, it was pretty funny to see. And uh, let's delete this and actually create a fire ex extinguisher. I had to shut up and actually think on how to, to spell it to stop messing it up. Uh, let's open. Go to fire extinguisher. Or, you know, go to the folder you save this. And you can get the albedo which will get you the color of our fire extinguisher. And if you put it into the principal BSDF, here is what we have. And I'm smiling because I'm such, so in love with the moments like this when it's working so nice and, you know, it looks so good. 
and here's how this looks and it looks really nice but again of course this is not a whole detail because it is not the entire map yet uh du duplicate this one delete it open another image and that will be the roughness and of course the roughness you have to set it to a non-color data so make sure you do that because otherwise actually let me just have it like this for those that never did this before again go to my uh course to like uh the texturing part which should be around the 15th or something like that i'm probably going to put it in the description um and you will see there all the details how to unwrap how to texture and you will see exactly why this doesn't work but basically it's a big error it's going to give you something like this which is really really bad and we don't want it and look what happens when i actually set it to non-color data it actually does what it's supposed to do and it makes it look much better and much closer to what we previously had in quickstone mixer also let's duplicate this and actually open the normal map and of course uh also set this to non-color data and you have to get this because it's a normal map right you have to actually make blender read it through a normal map node so get this set this to color and get the normal through the actual normal you know button and here is the result and i don't know about you guys but i am actually pretty impressed on how with how our fire extinguisher looks it's pretty dandy it's pretty nice and the reason i said pixel mixer it's even better than blender when it comes to baking it's because you now have basically these three images are your fire extinguishers um textures why is that important you might ask well pretty simple actually because with that what this means is that we literally gave blender a way to uh uh how, how do i explain this actually well we gave blender a way to um read the material just with three images and why is that good we don't have to bake this anymore we don't have to bake it again in blender because we already have the textures separated separated and basically you can get this and if you zip this with the whole thing it's gonna go out of the gate it's gonna go great now of course if you do add stuff over this which we will uh it's well unfortunate but it's the way it has to go um that means you will have to actually you know keep working with it a little bit and bake it again but what we will do is now actually create um, a, a sign, right? So, you know, all those fire extinguishers, actually, let me get back to the reference for a second, have these kind of signs on them that actually say, hey, I'm a fire extinguisher, you know, you can use me for this, 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 and that. Uh, you know, something like this. This is in Romanian, by the way. It's my native language. You might not understand it, uh, but actually, wait, sign, fire so yeah you might uh, see something like this you know over it that hey pull me pull the pin pull whatever and you know do stuff with it uh so you would have all this and yeah i mean um we want to create that as well because you know our fire extinguisher should also have something like that okay so actually after finding the um good enough label we can actually take it in and play around with it in gimp now of course you can use photoshop for this if you if you have it i will use gimp because it's free and because well i kind of got used to it also but mostly because it's free i'm poor what do you want me to do now we have this and this is actually pretty fine we can use this the way it is but what i usually do with this kind of stuff is um well of course i'm actually uh cropping it to fit my own selfish need which is of course to use this label as a decal for my blender uh 3d asset and i can just select this then go to selection invert the selection before we delete this though we have to go to layer add transparency add an alpha channel so that we know that it behind it is going to be transparent it's very important to actually do that 
and then <clears throat> just clear the background and then we have only the label itself which is good enough uh let me uh actually just export this uh all right um and i'm gonna say this good because it's gonna be the good version of it uh and because it has an alpha channel you need to save it as a png by the way so save it as a png export it and now because we already have the good version of it out there uh let's delete the selection because we need to affect it we need to actually create a little bit of damage to this right uh the first thing that i will do is actually select this uh outer band there and actually i'm gonna make it a little dirtier i'm going to get uh to a very desaturated brown color brownish color that's a little lighter something maybe around there and go to edit and fill this with foreground color which will fill this with this exact color that i just showed you um so that it makes it look way dirtier and to actually make me be able to you know uh sprinkle a little bit of um you know like dirt and stuff like that in here and actually we can also of course uh paint over this so you can you know get a brush and actually using making use of our opacity here uh we could just create dirt which is something i uh did do for the other object as well uh actually this part i didn't show it in the last tutorial so you are privileged you actually get way more than you would have gotten uh if i wouldn't have made that mistake the other days <clears throat> uh let me actually increase the opacity maybe um oh it was set to light and only that's why i was doing okay so now i actually have to be careful because this is not gonna work out too well if i'm not so of course if i would have used the grease pencil it would have been a much better idea but honestly to do it just for this not gonna happen uh i'll be totally honest with you um too much work for just throwing a little bit of dirt you know on this and again you know you should vary the size vary the angle also in my opinion you should you know create a little bit of a more interesting pattern if you want do something like this also if you want it again just make it dirty just make it look pretty weird and again uh, actually i'm gonna take that out. don't exaggerate because you know it's much better if you don't and now another thing we will do is actually to have it you know actually uh, being a little bit ripped apart by time right what you want to do is again select uh the zones that you want to you know take out and uh let's say you want something like this out and you can select this go here and actually clear it and this will actually be deleted out of your body which is pretty cool why the hell did I leave this here though? No. So dumb. So again, select this, uh, go to edit, clear it out, and now we don't have it anymore. Right? We have uh, we have it out of it. Um, so I'm gonna just do this a few times to actually create you know more uh, details. And after this, I'm actually coming back with the last part actually, uh, at least of this fire extinguisher, because we are going to completely uh texture that <clears throat> also one more thing that i forgot to add and again didn't do yesterday i just realized i should have you can use the blur tool in here so uh, let me size this up considerably and also my recommendation is use a different brush a circle brush would be better and just blur these edges um let me you know decrease the size here the reason for it really is because with a blurred um edges like this it will look way more normal it will look like okay it's just faded away by time again we're going to use the damage we've created in our advantage and actually make it look this looks way better than it looked you know we just 
those obvious cuts, right? So just to use that to uh, make that final sparkle, the final good stuff. Okay, so you've done this, you've created your perfect uh, label and you want to actually put it on top of your actual fire extinguisher. What you want to do with this actually is go to edit, uh, go to file, sorry, export it. Again, we should export it as a PNG and I'm going to write in here that it's damaged. Okay. And also there's one more thing I do want to add, which is I want to go to filters, not to filters, sorry, to colors. And in here, I want to use colorize, uh, not colorize. Again, what am I, what is wrong with me? So uh, what I want to use, sorry, is the saturate and uh, use the color to gray option, which will make the colors, well, gray. I think it was actually pretty obvious. You can also enhance the shadows. This will actually help us quite a bit and you'll see why in just a second. So we'll take this, export it one more time and actually in here, uh, next to damage, write roughness. We will use this as our roughness map because remember, what is roughness? And also as a bump map, because roughness and bump map are basically black and white colors, black and white uh, images, which is exactly what we have here, and we can totally use it. I did use it for the um, label UT right here, so this is the exact same process, and actually I think it looks absolutely wonderful. Uh, so I'm actually going to put this right on top of my fire extinguisher, right? The way you have to do this is actually, you can add another image texture. I'm gonna just call it fire Okay, um, so I created it, make this 2K uh, set it to blank and now what we have to do <clears throat> is actually just get a mix color node right just like so uh, put this in between uh, set the color from the albedo from our fire extinguisher to, to B and this image texture set it right here to A and we actually probably will just want to add, I tend to say. No, probably mix. Mix actually might be better. Yeah, and uh, set the factorial all the way up to one. And you'll see in just a second how this works. Go to texture painting. And uh, actually you can see the reminiscence from yesterday's failed texture, of course. Well, tutorial, whatever. And you can see that I use the exact same thing up here. Uh, but what you want to do is actually make sure that... Let me get this. Uh, wait, where is that? Uh, oh yeah, here. In object mode, make sure that the extinguisher is the one that's being chosen. And set this to texture paint. Uh, make sure that the texture here is actually the texture you want. So instead of this image, what we want to do. So if you don't have, let me actually start from there. If you don't have any texture, which is the default thing, go, come to texture, press on new texture. And then with this, go to the texture tab down here. And you will have image or movie. And you can press on open. Go to wherever you actually saved your texture. Okay, and here what you actually have to do is actually choose the texture you want, which is the extinctor damage texture. And now with this, uh, well, there are a few more things we have to do. First, in here, you have to set this at the mapping tab here. Just uh, press on the arrow. And instead of extension to be set by, to repeat, you have to choose to have it extend. So we actually have only one version here. Okay, and one more thing you have to do, back to tools, under your texture right here, instead of tiled, which is going to be the default version you will have, you have to select stencil. And one more thing you have to do, make sure that this color is set to pure perfect white. 
otherwise it's going to affect the color or the opacity of your uh, label and now uh, if you're here with stencil uh, if you press oh, let me actually reopen the screencast in this tab so shift right click will allow you to actually scale this Control right click allow you to rotate this and uh, just right click allow you to move it around so uh, these are the methods you're actually going to use to, you know, get your texture to wherever you want. Set the texture to where you want it to, to be. And then just paint over it with absolutely no regards for anything else. Okay, so after texture painting, we can see that this actually works uh, pretty well. The reason uh, this was not actually working is actually... Um, Honestly, I don't know. I just deconnected the mix color and put it back in. And uh, for some reason, it worked properly. Uh, and this is what you'll see. So as you can see, uh, you can leave it set to mix, by the way. But I think it darkens the red a little bit. And it would make sense to do so. Uh, and if you set it to white, uh, to white to add, it's actually going to lighten it a little bit. Which it's actually a little better. You know, you can, of course, play with the way these to blend. Uh, we talked about this quite a bit today, so, you know, you might actually understand it uh, perfectly by now, but yeah, you can just play around with it and actually make it to whatever you want. And let's say you don't want this red and you want it brighter, what you can do is actually come here and, you know, just choose another color. Make it brighter, make it darker, make it however you want, and you can take this and then put it here and basically do the whole process but with this mix color in in this case and you will still have the fire extinguisher or what you can do and i do think this is a little of a better idea is actually come here to the iron and actually just brighten this the moment you brighten this one up uh, and you do this you can just export it put those back in and it's gonna work perfectly fine and uh yeah I think it's just a little bit of a better, because you're not having to bake it again. But, uh, you know, it's uh, your choice. Uh, and uh, this is the fire extinguisher. However, there's a, uh, there's a difference between the way I use this, which actually, if you look at it, I use this with another principle, BSDF. And the reason for it is because this way I can actually use the roughness map and the normal map that I created uh, previously in GIMP. So, what I can actually come and do is come here, and uh, this detail you see right here, which also I think it's also a little bit, I think I drew it pretty bad. <laughs> Let me delete it. Uh, Let me make sure that this is the selected object that I'm painting where I have to actually paint, and that's actually ruining something. Oh, and I'm uh, still uh, painting with a... Uh, yeah, that's why I was doing this. So let's deselect the texture so that I can delete this. And now actually putting the texture back. <coughs> uh, so putting the, te the texture back in so that I can actually draw with it. And of course, I have to get this from tiled to stencil back in to actually be able to draw the, the label. I think it's much better if it's here. I actually can see it this time. Again, I don't know what happened there and why it didn't work. But again, I think it looks absolutely fantastic after it gets put on our fire extinguisher. And uh, really, I'm not even considering uh, to do it like this one. I think it looks more than an okay by itself, just drawn on top. Yeah, no, I think it looks it looks pretty fine. Um, again, there are two ways you can do this. You can either just use this mix color with add to have this. Make sure that, you know, our albedo from Quixel Mixer is set to B and the texture paint that we just created is set to A and it will work fine. And then with the oxygen, just like the oxygen um, tank uh, for, the, for the label, what you can do is just put a mix shader uh, create another principal BSDF, use the albedo and that roughness map we created to, you know, get this little grainy look in here. 
Uh, so two ways of doing the same thing. I think that's actually a pretty good idea. Uh, so let me actually also use Blender's methods to do a little bit of the work because I showed you Quixel Mixer. Now I want to show you that also Blender can keep up with, you know, all this stuff. Now for this, I'm going to just use the same material I use for, for this one. It's just a material taken from a Blender kit. Now, of course, we can come in and actually texture paint over it to make it look a little better. Again, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you have to go and watch my um, previous videos on texture painting because I explain every single thing in detail and how to do it and how to use that method to amplify all your textures. But basically, um, you know, you just paint imperfections over an already good texture to make it even better. And now just put brass, uh, the brass scratched after, you know, you get what you want. Of course, you know, you can play with the way this looks. Uh, for now, it's not what, uh, what I'm, you know, really caring about. And actually this, um, I don't know if I should put this to, to gold also, because if you remember, it didn't actually look like this. So I can actually come to Polygon, because I know one material that actually looks really, really good. And it's actually this one right here, the Metallic Galvanized. I actually set this to be my, my material here. Actually, this looks a little better, but I don't really like this either. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I don't know. I actually am a am very switched team between the same. Uh, you know what? I'm going to go with the brass. I think it looks a little better, a little cooler. So uh, yeah, I'm going with that one. Uh, for this part right here, again, you can use... Personally, I probably will use Quixel Mixer to create a better... Um, method of doing this one because it's just a shame not to really because i can create some pretty cool details on it um and then these two i mean really with this one it's pretty easy uh just come here get the steel from a polygon right uh and what we will want to do is actually let me actually get a little bit farther away to be able to show it to you. Uh, so what you will do is actually select all these, get them a little further apart, get a mix color node, and just, you know, with this set to add, change this color to a red. So basically now we have the perfect color. You can of course set this instead of add to multiply uh, if it makes it a little better for you. It just depends on the way you see fit, right? I actually like how this looks quite a bit. Okay, so this actually looks really neat. Uh, let me look at it this way. It's pretty perfect. This will actually have the same exact material uh, however, that's actually one thing I forgot to do, it needs to unwrap it. But for these smaller, smaller objects, first of all, I'm not going to work too much on their textures because, again, no one will see it, really. Um, for the fire extinguisher itself, it's a little different. People would see this, and I think it looks really cool, and it's a pretty good thing to, to, do, to do it this way. However, for, you know, these small parts up here, I mean, who cares about it, really? Of course, you can take it and actually put it in um, Quixel Mixer and do the whole process one more time. Personally, though, I find it tedious and, you know, sometimes it doesn't have to be that way. You can buy some time by smartly choosing where to actually put the that set time. Uh, okay. Also, let's use this metal one more time. Let's duplicate it. Actually, no, uh, not this metal. I'm sorry. Let's actually come in. Smart UV project this. And actually, I'm going to use the brass. Yeah, the brass is working much better. Uh, and I'm going to use 
the metal galvanized for this one, which again, I have to uh, smart TV project to UVN rapid rapidly. And here, oh, I thought this was um, dealt with. Apparently it was not. Okay, and now it actually looks pretty interesting and it looks like a pretty fancy, um, you know, extinguisher that you can use. Uh, and actually I'm going to add a subdivision surface for this one just to add a little more, you know, detail to it. And I'll probably have to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, optimizing this at the end. But until then, what I will do is uh, first things first, come in here and I need to save, first of all. Second of all, come in here and actually apply the solidify modifier because I will need the entire geometry for what I'm about to do. And what I'm about to do is to UVN wrap this. Uh, let me select these. Control E, mark seam. And of course, because the side that we won't see, it's gonna be here really. It's on the downer part and we won't see it either. So I think it's uh, the best version that we can get. So mark seam here. And uh, not his uh, smart UV, sorry. A U and unwrap. Of course, we can use the grid test to actually see if it looks okay. And uh, there is stretching, but it's where we actually created a seam. So it wouldn't really be that bad. Let me actually look at it also from. Um... Our UV grid here. Let's see the stretch. And. The stretch probably is happening. Where is it happening? Really? There's no stretch. <laughs> so yeah, that will just look like that. Probably because of the you know, not enough geometry being added to it. Um and yeah. These are the problems that come with very low poly things. But, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Again, make sure the scale is applied. Make sure the rotation and the location are applied as well. And um, I'm going to redo this whole process. Go back to Pixel Mixer, texture this, and come right back to you with the final product. Okay, so here is the end. So let me actually um, get this up in here much closer. This is the end result for our uh, head right here, for our um, extinguisher. And I do think, personally at least, that this looks absolutely, well, uh, fantastic. I think both the extinguisher and the oxygen tank uh, look absolutely great. Actually, let me uh, know in the comments, which one do you think actually looks better? I'll be totally honest with you, I will go with the extinguisher. Just because I um, beveled it. First of all, second of all, I think I worked way smarter, smarter in it, and uh, also just because of I don't know the materials. They they just look better on this one than on this one. This is my personal opinion, but I think both of them really really look good. Um, so let me actually do also this catch right here. This uh, support rather not a catch. Um. And by the way, because it's a separate body all of it on its own, which actually can find it here. Uh, and actually, let me move that to the main body because really that's its place. What I need to do is actually just mirror it at the end here on the X axis by the actual body, right? Because that's where it has to be. It will have an oxygen tank on one side and an extinguisher on the other side. Uh, so with this, now it's the time when I actually can move my my body like this. But before I actually do that, let me actually get the origin to the geometry. So now I actually do move it and rotate this whenever wherever I want, right? So uh, this will actually get closer somewhere around here. 
we will rotate it on the X. Uh, maybe something like this. And uh, the head here is actually intersecting. So what I want to do is actually get it a little bit upwards. Something like this. And then uh, Gen Y again. Press Y twice, by the way, because we changed the rotation on the X. So it needs to know how to put it. And actually, here is going to be a little bit of a difference because for the extinguisher, this uh, support doesn't particularly work. So what I will have to do, unfortunately, is get this, put it kind of here. So be more or less symmetrical with the other one. So I just copied it, right? And what I want to do is change the shape of this one to actually uh, be more, uh, you know, more of what I need. Right, so I'm going to just actually have to leave this down, let this down like this. Um, also, let us select all these faces here. And actually, again, we will have to move this uh like this so it's just you know changing a little bit of positioning nothing too crazy but just to fit way better with what we do and this should at least theoretically work question mark um it does seem to fit so that's a good that's a good thing however do I have any howevers? I do have a little bit of an however, don't I? Is it intersecting? It's intersecting with my body and I don't want that. So first, it's actually the angle. The angle is not actually the greatest. Uh, let me, you know, position it as well as I can to be parallel. Now, actually get it. So it has to be somewhere around here. This is where this support head has to be so to do that go three you know press three and then uh basically what we need to do is select all these vertices and then g y y and bring all that up to here and just to make it look a little less weird let me actually just get this you know around here maybe scale it a little more down and now we can actually look, by the way, let's also apply the scale for it to be looking okay. And it actually looks pretty fine. And now we also have a difference between these two, which actually makes our model look even more interesting. Yes, uh, we will sacrifice a little bit of our, you know, uh, data because this will use more information. But uh, yeah, I think this looks absolutely fantastic. I still have to model a little bit of my uh, robot. I will want to add some more details, but uh, I'll do that in my free time. And basically, I will just do the texturing from here on out. So expect more videos such as this. I do hope and I do think that this was really, really useful. So again, changing uh, the workflow is very hard, first of all, right? To me personally, I still kind of get used to working on something else rather than Blender, but I totally do find it way more useful. And let's be honest, these textures look much better than what I could have gotten or we could have gotten out of just Blender in this amount of time. I'm not talking that we couldn't do this with Blender. Definitely we could have, but it's the problem of time, right? Pixel Mixer, or Substance Painter are good because you can actually do it much faster. And you can actually just use the layering, which is much easier to use rather than the nodes, to create basically the same effect, if not even better, because of the textures. Again, we do have Blender Kit and Polygon, thankfully, thanks to both of them really. But, I mean, to be honest, this is still superior because, you know, it's, it is. We find more textures, we find imperfections, you find brushes, you can find whatever you want, and at the end of the day, you get one of the best results out there. So, you know, I love it. I think it's amazing. 
And I think with this, we should actually go right to the outro. This is it for this video, guys. I am so sorry again for not being able to post yesterday this. Again, I tried, but it was really messed up. And I didn't want to give you a bad product. So I hope this was better for you. I hope you actually are glad to, you know, have this. I think they look really well. And I think they are actually super useful and super, you know, nice in general. And, uh... I do have a little gift for you so if you stuck till the end of this video and also just because you're here and you know you support this channel and uh i do presume that again if you stuck till the end you're subscribed if not please think about it at least um my surprise is that you will find these exact two models with these exact textures on sketchfab for free you can download them um by the moment you actually see this video actually uh, I will up I would have uploaded them uh, for by yesterday because this is when I'm filming this. So uh, please take this as a sign of my appreciation for you and also thank you again so much for sticking around till the end. Uh, don't forget please that the link to my sketches uh, for this robot are actually down in the description. Also, um, please check out other videos and please, again, think about sharing this video so that other people can actually see it. And with that being said, again, thank you so much and I wish you guys to have a great weekend and, um, well, we can all be happy. It's Friday and it's the end of the week, so that's great. Bye, guys.